We're going to review five more game jam tips to help your game jams be more successful. This video is part two in a series of game jam tips. If you haven't seen tips one to five yet, don't worry. The tips can be viewed in any order, so you'll be able to catch those later. This video is tips six through ten. Tip number six, the theme should inspire you, not constrain you. Many organized game jams have a theme. Don't think of the theme as something that's going to constrain your creativity. Treat the theme as something that unleashes your creativity. The human brain is good at adaptation and problem solving. Creativity doesn't happen when you have no limits. Creativity happens when you have a goal that you need to solve with some constraints in place. Let's jump into an example. Suppose the theme of the jam was companion. This was one of the runner-up theme finalists for Ludum Dare 52. One way to approach the theme is to say, hmm, how can I make a really good game about companions? What games out there are already about companions? How about The Sims, where companions can live together in a house? Or how about a game like Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, where there's two companions that move through the world together? While there's nothing wrong with this approach, and if it leads you to a game that you're excited to jam on, great, but don't stop there. The challenge with this brainstorming style is that you're starting with the theme and only thinking about what existing game ideas you could do with that theme. Try turning it around. Use the theme as a source of inspiration to explore new concepts. Ask yourself questions like, I really wanna make a vampire survivors game. What would it look like with a companion? And bam, a co-op vampire survivors game. You're allowing the theme to inspire you based on other things that you're interested in. Maybe you're thinking, hey, I was really hoping that the theme runner-up, which was Layers, won instead. What if I made a game that was about Layers and Companions? Next thing you know, you're making a platformer game in which the player has a companion in another layer of reality, and you're solving puzzles together. Tip number seven. Take the time to read or watch a tutorial. Don't treat game jams as this time where you have to work, work, work for the whole jam. Learn something new. It'll make the jam more fun and make you a better game developer in the long run. In my last video, I listed tip number one as focus on learning, not accomplishment. I'll have links to the video on the end card if you haven't seen that video yet. And while you probably don't want to spend the whole jam constantly watching and reading tutorials, I can't think of a better way to learn something new than to watch a tutorial for about 15 minutes and then practice for the next eight hours putting that skill into practice. Want to get better at pixel art? Watch a pixel art tutorial and then practice for the next eight hours. Want to learn how to do better lighting in a game? Watch a tutorial on three-point lighting and then use it on all of your levels. Tip number eight. Get everybody on the same version of your engine at the same time. I use Unity for a lot of my game jams, but there are so many versions of Unity out there and an updated version comes out every week. Furthermore, the different versions of Unity aren't compatible with one another. Make sure everybody in your team goes to the Unity hub and downloads the same version of Unity before the jam starts. While less important, it could also help if everyone was on the same version of Blender, Photoshop, or whatever other tools that you're using. Although, in my experience, it's less important with these other programs because the files in those tools are more often than not backwards and forwards compatible between different versions. But when it comes to your core game engine, like Unity or Unreal, get everybody on the same version from the very beginning. Tip number nine, get to know your team. One of the great things about game jams is getting to know other people. Whether you're meeting some folks for the first time or your lifelong friends, take the time to chat before the jam. I like to schedule a meeting with my jam team members about three to seven days before the jam starts. The meeting usually goes for about an hour and is broken into two parts. First, spend about 30 minutes and make some introductions. Ask each other some basic questions like, what kind of games do you like to play? What kind of game would you like to make? Do you have any specific learning objectives for this jam? Do you know roughly how much time you're gonna have available to spend on the jam? Do you have any other time commitments during the jam period that we should plan around? The other half of the meeting is usually needed to plan some logistics for the jam. Here are some questions you should discuss before the jam starts. What engine are you gonna use? Unity, Unreal, Construct, Godot? 
How is your team going to do task tracking? You could use Trello, Notepad, Google Sheets. What are you going to use for source control? Is there a Git repository? GitHub would be pretty common for this. How are you going to communicate with each other during the jam? Nowadays, a lot of teams use Discord. Are you going to be using an existing Discord server or is someone going to set up a new Discord server for your jam group? How many external assets is your team going to use? This is an important one. Depending on both the jam that you're participating in and your team members, you might collectively decide you don't want to use any third-party assets or you might decide you're fine using lots of outside assets or anything in between. Does the team want to use AI art, sound, AI music? The answers to these questions often tie back to people's backgrounds and learning objectives for the jam. And it's really helpful to have these types of questions decided up front before hitting any surprises partway into the jam. Tip number 10, take progress screenshots and videos. Making games is hard and taking progress screenshots and videos is a nice way to celebrate your progress. Share the screenshots with the rest of your team in Discord or whatever communications tool that you're using. Post your progress shots to social media. Even if you don't want to share your progress shots with other people, it's nice even for yourself to review progress shots that you can look at months or even years later. You never know, maybe your game will turn into a hit and you'll be glad you had those progress shots for a future GDC talk. Let's talk about screen grabbing tools. At a very base level, you can use the built-in Windows snipping tool. It now comes pre-installed with Windows, so everybody has access. On a Mac, you could use Shift-Command-5 to use the built-in screen snipping tool there. Additionally, for video on Windows, you can use Windows Alt-R to record your screen. But if you want to level up your screen grabbing tools, my absolute favorite at the time of this recording is ShareX. It's not a sponsored video, I just really like the tool. ShareX lets you specify portions of your screen that you want to grab, make quick annotations to the image afterwards, and capture regions directly to video. It's hands down the slickest screen grabbing tool that I've used so far. A runner up to ShareX is GreenShot, which I've used for years, and that's free and open source. Two other tools worth mentioning. One is screen to GIF. This tool is fantastic and really easy to use to make animated GIFs of your game. If you're sharing to a site that doesn't take video files, it's handy to have this animated GIF option available. The last tool I wanna to mention is Chronolapse. Chronolapse is a program that can automatically take a screenshot of your entire screen at fixed time intervals. One fun use is to have Chronolapse take a screenshot of your entire desktop every minute. At the end of the jam, you'll have a ton of screenshots. Cut out all the sections where you're sleeping or AFK for long periods of time, and then you can stitch all the images together into a time-lapse video of your game jam. Thanks for joining me for five more game jam tips. If you're enjoying these tips, here's a link to the previous tips one through five, or you can view the full playlist of game jam tips right here. Happy game making.